Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the least infected city in America, it's the Ramble with me, Alex Bennett. We'll be here until midnight this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our old friend Bobby Slayton is with us, and I can't tell you what a pleasure it is, Bobby. You know? Yeah, let's do this quick. I want to get back out to my pool. We have a. Uh, You're a so LA. Going. You're so LA. I have to get out to my pool. I've always been so LA. I mean, I, look, I'm this New York with a passion, and um, it kills me because right, bef- right after the COVID thing started, yeah, in May, you know, my girlfriend and I for the last four years have gone back to New York every May, yeah. and we eat and drink our way through New York City. I drink more than her. She eats. I drink. We're, we're a good team. Okay. But. You know, I took her to the Bronx, to Arthur Avenue, which she'd never been to, mm-hmm. to Mario's. By the way, the owner uh, just passed away from COVID, and um, I'm very sad. But we went to last year for my birthday, and I took her to Botanical Gardens because she loves plants. You know, when I was born, I was born in the Bronx, grew up in Westchester, but I grew up, well, till I was four or five, right across the street from the Botanical Gardens. So it was something she needed to see. Have mm-hmm. you ever been there, by the way, being a New Yorker? Have uh, you ever been uh, to the it, Botanical it, Gardens? The Brooklyn Botanical Gardens? No, the Bronx one, the big one, the, the good one. The Bronx, okay. I've been to the one in Brooklyn. I see amazing to me. The Bronx, it goes, it, it's tr- It's right next to the Bronx Zoo, and it's a five-minute walk to Arthur Avenue, the real Little mm-hmm. Italy before Little Italy, you know, in, yeah. in Lower Manhattan yeah. uh, was established. But, you know, and there's still traces of, you know, some old Italians are still there. They, they, they was more Armenian and maybe Puerto Rican, whatever. But there's still a lot of the old restaurants that when I was a kid, my father would take me to. And, and it was just, it's great. Anyway, so we, we did that last May. And we wanted to go again this May, but we couldn't do it. But just to walk around New York, which to me, I mean, look, besides the COVID thing, New York's not the same city it was 20, 30 years ago. There's a great book out I just finished. It's so depressing called Vanishing New York, you know between that piece of shit Bloomberg and uh, Giuliani, how they really helped yeah. bring down. Oh, yeah. I also, I mean, it didn't start with them, but you know, Bloomberg, you know, making everything so sterile and getting rid of the old newsstands and putting those metal, you know, you know bomb I, shelters. I, I, and, I, I, you know something, I, you're saying something that touches deeply to my kills heart. Me. Kills me. I, I loved New York when it was a little bit on the dirty side, you know? Oh, well, yeah. Times Square, yeah. you look, you're a little bit older than I am. So you remember, look, I, I remember going to Times Square. It was seedy in the 60s, oh. but it was still, but it, they still had the classic movie houses. You don't want to go down 40 seconds. Do you remember Hubert's, do you remember Hubert's Museum? You know what? I, I walked by it once. I think it closed when I was about 12 or 13. And, I, you know, growing up in Westchester, I would take the, the train down to Grand Central. And the first place I would go before I discovered the village. I, I like The village was like 8th Street to me with all those, yeah. you know, I, I, yeah. I didn't really know McDougal Street. And I wasn't old enough to certainly go to the, you know. But you went to 42nd and, Street, right? Yeah, right. Of, yeah, but, but I went there to magic shops and fascination. You know, you know, I played the games and you wanted the masks and, you know, yeah. they had so many and, joke shops. And, and Hubert's Museum, Hubert's Museum was actually just a novelty store that right. in the window had literally, I saw this once, a display of dildos and knives. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> well, you know what? It reminds me, there's a store in Vegas that sells guns and guitars, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, but no, no, but you know, and not just down in dirty New York, but the New York I remember in like the late sixties when I was a kid, yeah. you know, my parents would take me to, to a restaurant and then we'd go see, you know, the sound of music or, Magnificent Men of the Flying Machine. You'd see some big movie in a movie palace that was still there. Yeah. Um, and then they started showing second run stuff, and then all of a sudden it was porn. And then, but I, I, that's not the New York so much that I miss. But it's a New York that you walk down the street, the village became so gentrified. What it was, it became so John Varvatos. Yeah, yeah. The whole CBG. What it everything. was when when I first lived here, which was uh, in the uh, the eighties, I guess. Um, uh, I. Uh, wait, wait a minute, excuse me, the 70s. Uh, I can't even remember anymore. When I was growing, wait, wait, wait. I was growing up listening to you on WMCA. In the 70s. I was 15, 16, early 70s. Early right. 70s. 
Uh, if, if, yeah, I get all my times mixed up. Uh, but uh, when I was here in the in the seventies, it was kind of like walking on the edge of a razor, New York City. There was a certain kind of seediness in the air, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, there was an excitement about it. You know, it was vital. Well, you know what? It was just all the, but, and I just remember, look, all the luncheonettes on Madison Avenue. I'd skip school when I was 15 or 16, and we'd go down to the village and buy hash pipes and rolling papers. And, you know, it was the late 60s, early 70s. I was the, at the end, I wasn't really part of that whole hippie thing, but I got ripped off for trying to buy LSD in, um, by that big cube on 2nd Avenue by mm -hmm. St. Mark's Place. And, um, but I just remember, you know, I'd go down and you know, different drummer and buy a fringe purple jacket with, you know, the money I saved for a month. And yeah. Anyway, but anyway, that New York is gone now. Tell but, them about uh, where it, we first met. Well, it wasn't in front of Max's Kansas City. Well, I it was. It years later. It was. No, 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 no. But that oh, was the first that, time we met. Oh, maybe that was, maybe that was the first time. No, you know what? I think I might have done, it was when I came down to do, you did your radio show. No, you no, 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 show no. When you got yeah, but fired. You, no, 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 yeah. no. You were still on WMCA. Yeah. You were on WPLJ when I saw you in front of Max's, but when you were on WMCA radio. Oh, really? Okay, and a lot of okay. people. Huh? It's, okay, so there was a time before that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay, I think most people that listen to you now and watch you know all this stuff, but, um, you know, before Howard Stern, it was a fan. And Alan Burke was on television, and I was 15 or 16, was smoking dope, we'd listen to your show on MCA, and it was a cutting-edge show. I remember when that Eldritch Cleaver on, when he was in, uh, you know, in Algeria, in, um, um, yeah. in, you know, hiding out, and Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin were your friends, and they were hiding well, out. Well, actually, who I had on was Tim Leary, who was staying with, with uh, Eldridge Cleaver in uh, wherever uh, that was. Africa. I got to open up for Timothy Leary once, and he couldn't follow me. It was at the other cafe. He no, would me around. He couldn't like that. follow and, you, of course well, he, not. He just, well, he decided he wanted to do stand-up comedy, so everybody came to see Timothy Leary. It was a small club. And everybody wanted to see Timothy Leary. And Bob Ayers in the club said, you want to open for Tim? And, he, and then I think after the first show, I'm not sure if I, I had to, I did the same thing with Soupy Sales. I opened for Soupy, and then Soupy says, I can't really follow you. How about if I go on and do a half hour, you come on and close the show? It was yeah, awkward. But get, um, getting back to the know, New York thing. Getting back okay, to the New so York anyways, thing. You so, were, so, you, so you were at my show the last night I was on the okay, air okay, okay. at so WMCA. I was growing up in New York, growing up in Westchester, and I'd call your show up. And I, I remember once saying, to, you know, we talked about marijuana, I was starting to smoke pot. Your show was very cutting edge. I remember one time I hung up because I didn't have the answer. I said to you, Alex, you believe in revolution? Because you know, hey, revolution and the yuppies and the yippies and the hippies. Yeah, yeah. And you said, a cultural revolution or a political revolution? And I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still don't know the difference. I might have to hang up. Uh, uh, Sorry, I brought that up. Anyway, so I called you up, and WMCA was getting ready to let you go, or for whatever reason. Yeah. And you're doing your last show. And I called you up, and I said, listen, I'm writing a story for my high school newspaper about you. Can I come down and see your last show? And you said, yes. You put on your producer, not Jimmy Walker, the engineer, the black guy, whatever, really nice guy. I forgot who, mm. your producer, you put him on. And he said, would you like to come down to the last show? And I came down with my friend Howard Glazer. We took the subway. We got stoned out of our minds. We sat in the audience. And, and it was just, there was no studio. We sat in the audience. back of the studio, yeah. yeah. Back in the, it was just me and him. And we sat there for three or four hours. And, and I don't think you, you looked at us once and said, how you doing? It was your last day. You weren't very happy. So we waited for you afterwards to, get, to interview you. We waited about a half an hour. You came out to okay, let's do the interview. And I said to you, well, we didn't really plan to do an interview. We just had to make up something so we'd come let us watch your show because we knew you wouldn't let us watch it unless we made up something. As an idiot, I probably should have interviewed you and I should have put it in my school paper, but I wasn't that smart. I didn't even, you know. Yeah, and you and know then years later, I mm -hmm. ran into you in front of uh, Max's Kansas City. I was coming out of Max's. I think I went to see the New York Dolls. You were going to Max's. It was too late for me. I had to take the train back up to the suburb. We went to in the morning. You're walking to Max's. You must have just finished your show at WPLJ. And you're walking by us. And I said, uh, yeah, I think you were going to go to, you're going to do your show, maybe. Yeah, what I'm going to do my show. My show was on at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay, you were on, on your way, maybe out of Max's. We were yeah. going to Max's, whatever. Yeah. So we're walking by you. And I go, Alex, and you swivel around. And you don't stop swiveling. 
You swim I go, yeah. I go, hey, can we come watch your show? You go, no. I can't swim. I just kept walking. <laughs> it, was like, it, was like, it was like a really smooth basketball move. You're like, fake this out. Turn around, new. And took off. Very smooth move. Yeah. Without missing a beat. Yeah. And, and, you swim and, and you as answered, the, and you continued on your way. As the years have gone on, you have not let me forget that. Now, the last time we were talking... You were mentioning that, you know, Lenny Bruce and so on, and how would he play today and so on. Uh, and my, my friend Shecky always mentions to me every now and then, he says, remember something. There are people today who don't know who John Lennon was. You know, well, we, we tend to think that within our sphere of reference, oh, who doesn't know who John Lennon was? Who doesn't know who the Beatles were? Yet there are people who are 30 years old who don't know who John Lennon was. Well, that's why I don't give a shit about global warming or yeah. the end of the world. It doesn't make any difference to me because I'll be dead in 10, 20 years. And, you know, fuck them. You know, there's certain things you need to know. You know, it, but there was that old joke, remember, that there were people who didn't know Paul McCartney was in a band before Wings. Now people don't know who Wings are. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. So, so, Okay, no, but it, it bothers me, and I, I know I'm that old guy. Get off my lawn! But if you can't name the four Beatles, you should just. Oh, die. I, I was mentioning. I was mentioning that the other day that my my big test for a woman in going out with her is I would yeah. ask her name the four Beatles, and if she couldn't name all four of them, I didn't go out with her. Well, yeah, it's like that scene from that guy in Diner when he was before he married her. She had to know all the music. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, it's funny because my girlfriend's in her 50s, so mm. she's a good 10 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was, she knows all this stuff. But, it, you know, at the same time, you know, she's a big Beatles fan because her late husband managed some of their, uh, some of their stuff. And, uh, but, you know, she didn't know who Graham Parker was. So I didn't see Graham Parker. But she loved Springsteen and Elvis Costello. So we, we, it's nice to be able to turn somebody on. She had no idea who the New York Dolls were. And now, not her favorite band. You know, she sits in a car with Nora Jones and, and Amy Winehouse, which is terrific, but it's nice that she knows and likes a lot of the stuff that I like. But, you know, I, I just don't like when people go, well, they were before my time. Fuck you, that guy in a dollar bill was way before my time. Absolutely. You know, uh, Modern Times and Charlie Chaplin was before my father's time. When I was a you kid, know? when I was a kid, I was fascinated by everything that went on before I was born. You know, Actors, actresses, music, and so on. I mean, my favorite record was my my grandparents left me a bunch of 78s, and I have a 78 of a 1916 recording of Al Jolson singing "Where Does oh. Rob Where Did Robinson Crusoe Go with Friday, Friday on Saturday on Friday. Night." Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I used to have the sheet music to that. You know, yeah. it's funny you mentioned Al Jolson because my father loved him and turned me out to Jolson, and I loved Jolson my whole life. And and you know, I, I still listen to him. I used to sing Rockabye Baby to my daughter. And then she heard Jerry Lewis do it. That guy had a lot of balls to, to not only to sing, yeah. but to do Rockabye Your Baby after Jolson and yeah. Judy Garland did it. But um, um, but the interesting thing is no, but I, I loved Jolson and I loved all the music from that era. You know? Yeah, so, so, you, so you enjoyed stuff that happened before you were born. And, and I, but, but, you know, yeah. I, for instance, I love silent movies. I love I, silent I, movies. I do too. I don't watch them as much as I should, but I, you know, you know. Um, you watch them yeah. properly projected with uh, with a good music to it and so on that goes. It was made specifically for that movie, and it, it's a, their delight. You've just missed out on a whole area of, of movies you never knew existed. I'm not sure. I, I'm afraid to take my iPad and show you this, but right in my hallway is a beautiful, beautiful painting that I had commissioned. Yeah. Um, of uh, Buster Keaton. Oh wow. wow! It's beautiful. Who I like better than Chaplin? But, but by, the, 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 by the way, is, by know, the way, by the way, do you still have the creature? No, yes, I have the creature. The creature. Yeah, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to that story. We'll again. go to that story some other time. But yeah. uh, I, of course, I sent you a thousand dollars because you just had to have it for some reason or another. And then instead of using it to, I think, feed yourself, you went out and bought the creature. Well, I did. A, I well, I don't want to go into the whole story, but I did a gig. And like an idiot, I left like my whole week's pay at the time, fifteen hundred yeah. bucks yeah, in my pocket, it. to dance with this woman. Somebody went in my pocket, took the money, or maybe I dropped the money, but it was all the money I had. And I called you at six in the morning. I needed to borrow a thousand dollars to pay my rent, and I, and I, and I didn't pay. I, I want to pay my rent, but yeah. I bought it. For, I, I didn't pay you back. 
but I was driving by a store on Melrose Avenue and saw this magnificent, extremely rare creature from the Black Lagoon statue, six feet tall. It's from the fifties. It was which a stand-up they had in the theaters. No, it was. It was a. It was a rare. Nobody. It was, it was from Mexico. Nobody's sure where these came from. They no, like but I think it was part of the promotion for theaters where they would take this stand-up of a real life-size right. creature and have him in the lobby right. like this. But he didn't. Yeah, but he didn't look like the creature because his face, he had fangs and his face was painted flesh-colored. So somebody thinks he was part of a chain of magic shops. I don't know, a bunch of different things. Meanwhile, somebody got the mold and we redid them over the years, and you can still find copies. But it's funny because he's in my office, and I keep thinking, you know, if we have an earthquake here, or, you know, there's always fires in L.A., my neighbor's not too prone to fires, but it could happen. So I have a box of all these videos of my daughter and family photos, and then I'm thinking, what am I going to grab and put in my car? And I'm looking around my office, a couple of things I have here, a couple mm -hmm. of signs, yeah. important pictures from movies I did. Maybe I'll grab those. And they go, the creek is the most important thing. There's no way I can pick that thing up and put it in my car. And I just thought of the creature perishing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Was a that, horrible. That would thought. be the first thing you'd grab. If I can't, if I can get him, I don't know if I could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Too much shit. Whatever. Hopefully yeah. I won't have that problem. I got so much crap in this place. I, you know, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely yeah, I know. Ridiculous. I can see a lot of it behind you. You can see a lot of it. Hey, listen, you know, we've kind of run out of time, but I would love to do this again, Bobby. I know you wouldn't, but I would love to. Well, I have nothing to plug. You know, I'm doing a few podcasts. People are calling me. I think they go on Facebook and ask every comic yeah. to somebody answers them. You know, and I told you this the other day, uh, we want to talk to you about what you're doing during the uh, pandemic and yeah. how you keep yourself busy and... I'm sick of talking about it. I play my drums. I go swimming right now. I'm going to make a marinade for my salmon. I'm going to go for a swim. I'm going to work out and bang my drums some more. That's the whole fucking day. I'm, I'm going to, after this is over, I'm going to go bang my drum, but I'm not talking about uh, music. Oh, but, boy. Uh, I, I, I boom, ba boom, ba boom, pa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen. Got, you know? Boy, we're getting old together, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I've never, I've actually never felt better, you know. Yeah. Although it's funny because one day I wake up and I feel like I'm seventy. The next day I wake up, I feel like I'm thirty. Mm. But I, I work out. I have a younger girlfriend. I never thought a fifty-seven-year-old girlfriend would be. A, I'm dating a younger woman. That's when you know you're old. Yeah, you're calling a fifty-seven-year-old. Oh, I'm, I, my wife, my woman. wife is five years younger than I am. Well, yeah. that's good. And, yeah. and yeah. I, that's I, a younger woman. That's a younger woman. So we we're, tell, we, go, we go for the young babes, right? <clears throat> tell her I said hello. Hey, listen, stick around after we're through here. I just want to say goodbye to you. But anyway, that's Bobby Slayton. He's not playing uh, anywhere, and he doesn't intend to. Okay? No, uh, don't intend to. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you, Alex Bennett. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Bobby. I love Bobby. Who doesn't love Bobby? Anyway, well, I'm getting dizzy. I've been having, I've been lightheaded lately. I don't understand it. I don't know. They say it might have something to do with the radiation that I had, that uh, I have a, a certain fatigue. But anyway, I'm here. I'm doing my little uh, my little program, and uh, we invite you to call us using Zoom. If you don't know how to use Zoom, uh, go over to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash a Bennett, or, and, and then there's a little link there, or you can go over to gabnet.net, go over to the right-hand side of the page. There's a column there. In the middle of that column, it says click here if you want to go on to Zoom, and uh, you can go on to Zoom, okay? I only have one person waiting for me in the, um, in the waiting room right now. Uh, let me see here. All he's got to do is click. There he is, joining. Okay, and I go here. I do this, and there we go. Oh, here, here comes some other people. Here comes uh, Jeff Stein, and here comes Robert Natale. Uh Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Are you okay? Gentlemen, yeah. how are you? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. And um, uh, it's uh, another day in the neighborhood. You know, I'm getting so sick. Can I tell you? I'm, I, I got a little depressed over the week. A little. What's new for me? A little depressed over the weekend. Uh, just with this whole, everything that's going on, is there any good news? 
Is there anything that I can go, you know, that's wonderful. What a wonderful, wonderful thing, you know? But no, everything is miserable. We got the COVID. We got the economy. We got the, what else we got? We got uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg dying. We got, uh, um, I'm trying to think of all the, ver oh, the hurricanes and the forest fires and on and on and on. And I'm going, you know, I, if it isn't fun to do a show like this, it's because there's nothing fun to talk about, you know? It's all kind of miserable. Yes, Brian. What? 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 I, we can't hear you. Brian, are you there? Can we hear? You? Not get, getting any audio from you. Your other guys are there, right? Charlie, can you hear me? No. Wait a minute. Something has happened here, and I, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> I have the wrong thing up. Okay. You have the wrong thing up. Yeah, That's what she said. Yeah, yeah. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, I mean, this is. <laughs> Adrian just left the room. It's yeah, a good thing. This is uh, this is the kind of thing I say. Is that uh, just uh, you know, it, it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, you know, uh, I I I had the wrong slider up. See, I'm getting that way now. That's what's happening to me. Oh, you've been saying that for a long time. Yeah. Every time. Oh, I'm quitting. This stuff is terrible. I hate doing this stuff. Well, no, it's just that I'm starting to, like, I'm tired all the time. You know? I, uh, I, I have this sense of fatigue. It might be the radiation that I had earlier this year that's been causing it. Uh, but I just, I just want to feel awake and alive. And I went, I went out I, just to make sure that I have not been lacking uh, Sunday, I took a walk. I went out Good. for my two-mile walk, which went out to the Harlem Mirror, which is a lake, and around the lake, and then back home. That's two miles. Then yesterday, I did a walk up to another park, which was about a mile, uh, about a mile or so. And then today, I did another one of my Harlem Mirror walks. And you know what? I'm still tired. <laughs> How about the masks? Are you, did you are you noticing more people with masks or the same? Oh, or? listen, I got a picture today. I wish I had done something. Oh, so I, I saw it. it. Yeah, it's on my Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, two cops on the street corner. They're always on that street corner. I don't know why they have cops on that street corner. There must be something going on there that they're protecting against <laughs> or something. But they're not protecting against COVID because they're both standing there not wearing any masks. Now, you know, has anybody told people that they should protect and serve and serve by example? You Maybe know? they defunded the masks. They don't have any money they for masks. They probably don't have money right. for the masks. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, I took a picture of it I, when I came back. They were still standing there without the masks on. And I yeah. said, boy, you know, that's not right. That's not good. You know, wear goddamn masks. Tell everybody else they should wear a mask. We are getting an uptick here in New York City uh, in a couple of neighborhoods. Luckily, mm -hmm. one of them is not Harlem, but over in Brooklyn, we got, uh, I forget the, 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 um, um, the various, um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, people wouldn't know it even if I said it, okay? So it doesn't seem to mention, m m matter. Let me yeah, see. Here's your cops. Huh? Let hey, me your cops. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, can't find. Did it. those cops see you taking a picture of them? Y yeah, I don't think so. No. Yeah. No. I wish it were better light so you could really see how bad it was. You know. Yeah, sort of in the shadow. Uh, they weren't. Ex would beat you up if they had. What'd you say? What were you gonna say, Robert? They, they weren't exactly the most athletic-looking dudes either. Oh, no. no. Well, no, but cops, better than I've seen here. You know, I'd <laughs> yeah. like a cop that I know could, say, take oh, an old 21-inch television set up a flight of stairs. You know, I just yeah. as a test, because <clears throat> if they're going to serve and protect, I, I know they can serve, but it's very hard for them to protect with that weight going for them. Yeah. You know. Yeah, my my friend is uh, San Jose PD, and he's he's been on SWAT before and all that stuff. But he's six two. I'm six four. He's six two, and he's thinner than me. And yeah, he he runs after some of these guys, 
and he will mess around with them. He's saying, I'm catching up to you. I'm like five feet behind you because they don't think that they'll be chased, some of these guys. And he'll just run and he'll be talking to them while he's chasing them. Yeah. He'll grab them. But I mean, they aren't terribly <laughs> fit. I mean, we used to have somebody on this program who worked as a rent a cop or whatever that thing was he did. And he certainly wasn't in great shape, you know? Yeah. But they don't take physicals or anything, I guess, right? I guess not. I mean, it, I, I ad, uh, have to admit that there's probably a lot of lax time, and so you're eating donuts and sitting in coffee shops. <laughs> you know, um, I I often wondered about that one. I mean, come on. You know, I when I go to work, I'm expected to do my job, all right? I'm not expected to go to a donut shop and sit there eating donuts all afternoon, all right? So... Am I, do I have a right to complain as a person who is paying for them? Okay, I think I have a right to complain. Guess they don't have to run after you; they just shoot you. Huh? Yeah. They don't yeah. have to run after you; they just shoot you. Well, I was going to go over to them and say, "Hey, don't you think you should be wearing masks? I mean, after all, you're the police; you're supposed to give people tickets for not wearing them." Okay, uh, but then I figured. I'm not black, but they probably still shoot me. So, you know, I uh, I wasn't going to take the chance on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what about the old man? Remember they pushed the old man backwards and they hit yeah. his head on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that could have been you. I've been thinking about buying a T-shirt, though, that simply reads and, uh, 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 you know, and hope that some people will read them, read it, uh, that simply will read, uh, I wear a mask... Because I believe black lives matter. You know? Yeah. Or black lives matter, that's why I wear a mask. That would be another way of doing it. Because I can't see why these people aren't wearing masks, you know? I mean, come on, you're protecting other people. Eh, I don't want to give that lecture again. Hello, Brian <laughs> Ludwig. You're Brian Hello. with an L. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, but... Um, and I, you know, I, today, I, 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 I got a hold of, uh, of Rob Alfano, see why he hasn't called in a couple of weeks. He says, I'm just tired of talking about this stuff. He said, I am just so fed up. He said, I just want to keep my, I want to keep my mind sane. So I just don't want to even talk about it. And I, I understood that because, and I read it to I read the note to Marjorie, and she says, I feel the same way. I'm sick and tired of turning into MSNBC and being besieged with all this, you know? I mean, I suppose now is not the time to get fatigued. Hopefully, we're down to the, the home stretch. Uh, but, uh, God, I just, you know. What, what, did somebody, who, who just uh, sighed? Uh, yes, Frank. Uh, Frank. Frank Chu. <laughs> Frank Chu. Yeah, not Chu. John they, Larkin. They, they say that's how fascism starts to uh, creep in, is when everybody just gets so exhausted, they just tune out, and next thing you know, you know, we got fucking, fucking some yeah, but, guy who looks like an orangutan running the country. But the question is, what, do you, what, what should you have a, what should you care more about, your own sanity or the country? Sanity is overrated. Sanity is yeah. overrated, right? The good of the many outweigh the good of the few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've gotta find a way to stand up and fight, I guess. Well, I don't know. Not, you know, it's not that it, I know. It's getting a little frustrating. I mean, I, you know, this woman, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, wasn't dead. I don't think the van picked her up to take her to the morgue. Okay, no. that's how fast. Mitch McConnell was on the job with this whole thing. Well, you mean Republican politicians who don't uphold their word? Yeah. <gasps> and, then, I'm uh, and then and then saying, we now have enough Republican votes to vote in the next Supreme Court justice. And you think, you, think, you think to yourself, wait a minute, they haven't even announced who that person will be. I mean, if suddenly he said it's going to be Vladimir Putin, are they going to vote for him automatically because... Mitch yeah. McConnell said they were going to vote for him automatically. Yes, Brian. Oh, yeah. Now, now the, the, here comes the second half of what I was going to say, the part that many of you are probably not going to like, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, 
what pisses me off even more are the Democrats who just hold on to the end of the table, point their asses up into the air and say, okay, Mitch, fuck me. Fuck me, fuck me hard. Well, who says no, that? I don't know. Just, I, I don't know. Any, I don't know any Democrats who've said that. I yeah. I, I oh, would. Yeah. I would. Go ahead. What? I, what? I would say. I, I think the Democrats are just just they're playing it the right way because there's no way they can block this guy. They're gonna they're gonna have their Supreme Court person. But let let the fucking. Uh, there are ways they can block him. But no. Well, well forget about blocking him. I, there's yeah, a better. I there's, a, have it. there's a better They're idea. They're going to hang themselves because yeah. when they, if they go and fucking knock down the uh, Affordable uh, Care Act, Affordable Care Act, and then fucking roll back Roe, there won't be a fucking Republican okay. left. Okay, let me government. let me for a moment give you the the better scenario, the one that will make you feel happy. Okay, I hope so. Uh, there is no law as to how many people you can have on the Supreme Court. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And all that happens is we make sure we get we load the Senate, load the Congress and have a president who's a Democrat. Right. Who's a liberal. And then uh, he simply says, uh, I'm going to expand the uh, Supreme Court to 11. OK. And then they all go, OK, uh, let's put it to a vote in the Senate. And of course, everybody will vote yes. And then you put on two, you know, that's how we can we can overcome this okay. deficit. I say 13, and I have a reason for that. Well, 13 yeah. might be a better idea, but I'm just yeah. giving you yeah. an example yeah. of what he could do. That's why it could be symbolic. We have 13 lower appellate courts that are directly beneath the Supreme Court. There go, 13 justices on the Supreme okay. Court. Okay, that's, it's Plus fair. it would give us 7-6 majority. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, John. And, and then the... Uh, they admit uh, D.C. and Puerto Rico as states yep. if you get four more senators because D.C. Exactly. has more fucking people living there than Wyoming does, yep. you know? Are you thinking so, Puerto Rico, uh, though? There's Virgin yeah. Islands. There's, other, there's, there's six uh, U.S. territories. Put yeah. it up to a vote for all six of them. Yeah, yeah. But, the, but the point is that this isn't a lost cause, but uh, it means that we have to get the— I mean, I think we're going to take the Senate. I think that definitely yeah. the Republicans are out in the Senate. Christ we do. Huh? I hope you're right. Yeah. I hope the fuck Christ you're right. Yeah. And if that happens and Biden becomes president, we can do anything we goddamn please to correct the situation. Yes, Charlie? Yeah, I, I, I think, especially if they go ahead and appoint the Supreme Court justice, we'll definitely win the Senate. Because then I think even Lindsey Graham would lose. I mean... Because of, because of the hypocrisy. That's well, it looks like he's losing anyway. Yeah. You know, that's I'd why he's kind of... Seat. What? I said I'd love to see that closet queen lose his seat. That would oh, make yeah. my dick so hard. Lindsey Graham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, the way that they can actually block it is that if they were to impeach William Barr, yeah, who's done all kinds of illegal things as attorney and general? Trump. That would, by law, by the Constitution, the Republicans can't do anything except handle the impeachment. That means they cannot appoint another Supreme Court justice while the impeachment is going on. Look how yeah. long, but look how long it took us to get an impeachment going before, even with Trump. So how yeah. long is it going to take to get a bar impeachment going? And I don't think it's going to be in time. I think, I think that they are going to put in. This, uh, I think it's this woman, she's had seven children, which to me is purely selfish because that takes up a lot of parking spaces, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, any, any amount of children you have over two, we know uh, you are actually killing one child somewhere else on the face of the earth because it, it's just part of the, uh, the equation. And that's very selfish to have seven kids. Why? You because you, because sure. you're Catholic and you don't believe in birth control? Then just sew up your pussy and forget it. <laughs> don't forget the guys, too. I think there should be a tax write-off for people who decide to render themselves well, sterile. Well, listen, Say I... Yeah, yeah. What were you a saying? A $2,000 write-off. A two thousand yeah, dollar write off. I, I, sure, let's. That's how much it costs to let, raise a child what, zero what, to eight. What we do in this country is we encourage people 
<laughs> to have children by giving so them a, the giving a tax rebate and tax incentives for more yeah. kids. And I'm going, you should charge to start charging them an extra tax for every child over two that they have. That's what they call it it's selfless, Alex. It's treasure chests for the uh, politicians to rob. That's what children are to them, just treasure chests yeah. for them to fucking rape and loot and plunder. Yeah. That's all we are, these fucking people, these sociopaths. Yeah. What is that you're wearing? Is that... Like are you doing community thing. service somewhere? I uh, work. We wear vests, and I, I've, I've worn this in the past. I'm surprised right. you've noticed mm -hmm. it now. In the past yeah. years, since I started on this program three years ago, I've, I've been wearing stuff oh. like this. Oh, okay. so yeah, but you, you're know. in a nice lighting now. We can actually see you. Yeah. yeah. Usually, you're hidden behind a lamp, and you look like a mystery guy. Yeah. <laughs> Mister what? Like a mystery guy, you know, on one of those TV shows. But I don't know about you, but I'm just I'm just sick and tired of all of this. I'm just I'm just exhausted, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yes, Robert. All right. So I want to go back to that point tonight. Um, somebody that my wife and I used to work with posted some idiocy on Facebook, something that Chuck Woolery said about all Democrats, essentially all Democrats being socialists and and all kinds of crap that just made no sense. Mm -hmm. And our, our first reaction was. Chuck fucking Woolery, are you serious? <laughs> but, here, right. but here's the problem. The problem is my wife read it out loud. I got incensed. She got incensed. But then her reaction was, well, you know, let's just leave it go. Let's not say anything. Let's not get involved. That's part of the problem. For years, liberals have <clears throat> kept their mouth shut. And it's the people with the badass kinds of thinking that never shut up. I think it's about time people on the left side of the equation speak their mind and loud and long. Well, you know, um, we, we, the, trouble, the trouble is with the people who are on the left, uh, they, I will agree with Brian on, on the point that they don't seem to have a great backbone. You know, they want to yeah. be very civil about all these things. And I think when you're dealing with people who aren't civil, you yeah. should get down and dirty, yeah. you know? And I think you should also scare the crap out of them. That's why for years yeah. when people call up and say, oh, you're a liberal, I go, no, I'm not. I'm a leftist. Because that sounds worse, you know? <laughs> and um, uh, uh, if somebody called up and started railing against socialism, I'd say, I'm a socialist. You know, because that we got to scare them. I think it's time to scare them. I think it's time for us to be everything that Trump portrays us as being. You know, and, and because and because people on the right do so much yapping, they've actually taken the term liberal and they've made it into what they have defined it to be. Mm -hmm. I'm sick and tired of people saying to me, oh, you must be a libtard or, you know, or a liberal or this and that. And I say, you know, why is it that you not being liberal get to define what being liberal is to a liberal? It just doesn't make sense. But yet <clears throat> that's happened. They've controlled the message and they've made liberal a curse word. And that, you know, in a way, kudos to them for having done that. Mm -hmm. Brian? Uh, let's uh, say right back to Rob. Uh, I I see where you're coming from, and I pretty much agree. My my, my only, uh, maybe there's a difference of opinion here, but I'm of the uh, fight fire with fire philosophy. So if I'm going to be called a libtard, I'm going to call them right back, a republic hunt, you know? Back up all the way back in their yeah, corner, but then you, you know? just call them names. I want to scare the crap out of them. Hey, oh, that too. Hey, you know, uh, uh, I you know, I just came back from what I just came back from my uh, um, uh, Antifa meeting, uh, you know, because we meet uh, once a week down here in Harlem at a, oh, uh, at, a at a community <laughs> center and we you plot, blow take you know, plot blowing things up, is what yeah, we do, thousands of us. Um, they pose as country. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know. I wish, I wish there was Antifa because I would go to the meetings, right? 
you know, but, oh, yeah. there, but there is no, and there are no Antifa meetings. There is no Antifa leader. So, uh, uh, quite frankly, I am now going to pronounce myself the leader of Antifa. Okay. There's no organized apparatus. <laughs> Ooh. There's no organized apparatus, unlike uh, right-wing organizations. Well, no, it, 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 uh, the yeah. the head of uh, one of the uh, one of the big guys at Homeland Security before the uh, I think Congress last week yeah. said yeah. that it was Antifa was not a movement. Antifa was a philosophy. <laughs> the the <laughs> movement they're worried about are the white supremacists in this country who are very dangerous. But Antifa is is not a organization. It is not a movement. It is a philosophy. My friend posted a picture of guys getting off boats on D-Day and saying the original Antifa yeah. meeting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And what's wrong with being anti-fascist? Yeah, I mean, come on. You know, I mean, I uh, I'm not I'm not too hot for fascists. I don't think any of you are. So no, I'm an anti-fascist. Yeah. I think we could all say yeah. we're all Antifa. What? I think we, we could say we're all Antifa. Yeah. 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 Well, I take it a step further. I've been saying it for years. I'm anti-bully. Hmm? I'm anti-bully. I have a mild psychotic hatred for bullies. I've said that for years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so who knows? Who knows? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sick of and that. And I'm sick of, the, you know, I'm, I'm really sick of the fact that you know, a great woman dies. I mean, yeah. and truly a great woman. I mean, she yeah. in her lifetime did, ex did, exam <laughs> did exemplary things, okay? And yes, was a badass. Uh, uh, she was a bit of a troublemaker, you know? And uh, a, a, just a wonderful, wonderful woman who a lot of young girls, for instance, are growing up to look at as a role model, okay? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so it's really wonderful what, what she did. And she deserved a send-off that was decent. Not the fact that her body's going to be lying in state under the rotunda in the Capitol at the same time that Trump is going to announce yeah. her replacement. I mean, come hey. on. Have, you know, can't you wait? Now, here's the good news, folks, and this is something you can take to the bank. And you if any of you are money. Trump followers... <laughs> And uh, I think there's one of you out there who is. We you, know know who, <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, yeah. The fact of the matter is that if Trump was going to win this election and the d Republicans were sure he was going to win this election, they wouldn't mm. be rushing this nomination because they wouldn't care. They say, OK, well, let's wait for him to get elected and then he can do it. OK, yeah. but no, they don't think he's going to get elected. And that's why they want to do it right now. Yep. You know, they got a big dick as swollen as a fucking killed boss, a bruised killed boss, and they can't yeah. wait to jam it up our ass before they leave the door. Well, listen, you know, who knows what the hell they're going to do if he doesn't win, what they're going to do between the time he loses and the time he oh, yeah. the inauguration takes place. Because he can, Wayne, he can still show. write executive orders and he can do all kinds of things, you know. Uh -huh. and, and now we're going to have this woman with her uh, distended pussy uh, because of goes, seven children being going. pounded out of that thing. Oh, God, I can't. He's only 48. He could be children. around for 40 years. I, I mean, it, yeah. Kegel isn't even in her dictionary, okay? <laughs> um, what are you talking about? Who's this? Huh? What are you talking uh, about? This, uh, I don't know what her name is. She's got three names. Cuban American woman. Yeah, she just oh, walked oh, out. The one that <laughs> her name the, uh, yeah. the People of Praise organization lady. Yeah, she's from that thing, People of Praise. They they called the, the, their philosophy is that the men should be the leader of yeah. the soul family, and the women are called handmaidens. But they changed the name after the movie came out. I mean, the book and the movie yeah. came out. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Handmaid's yeah. Tale. Yeah. Well, and who you, know, who you can, I, 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 sweet I, ass I, I, is is given a loyalty test right now by Trump. That if I get in trouble in this election and lose, and I bring appeals to the Supreme Court, there are yeah. certain ways you need to vote. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You get it with Comey. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what you can do? You can lie. To, oh, sure. To, to, well, as, as, you know, as long as the day is long uh, to him. And then when 
push comes to shove, you vote against it. Cold comfort, though, that we're banking on that. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, here, here's the question. I mean, yes, we know he's going to take it to the Supreme Court if it's close. If it's not close, let's say it's a route, and I think there's a good chance it could be a route. They say that there are more people voting in advance now than have ever voted in advance, yeah. and they, they are saying we will have probably the largest turnout this country has ever seen for an election. If that's the case, it's not Trump's people that are rushing to the polls. It's, it's people like you and I who are against Trump and want to see this guy tossed out on his ear. So it could be an amazing route, all right? However, he's still going to take it to the Supreme Court. He's still going to file and say, you know, it was all those mail-in ballots. I, you know, they, they fixed the election. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't know if guys like Roberts will put up with that. I, you know, there are certain people who'd still have principles on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, even, uh, what was his name? The first guy that Trump put Gorsuch. in there. Yeah. Uh, Gorsuch. Gorsuch. He, he has a tendency to try and be fair about things. So I don't know if he's going to find solace with the Supreme Court if it's a real route, you know. Uh, and uh, nobody says you can't use mail-in voting. There's nothing in the Constitution that says all votes must be cast at polls. You know, it's, in That's fact, every, since every Trump's going to vote by mail. Every state can dictate how the elections are held. That's their job. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll tell you, there's a great documentary on Amazon. If any of you have Amazon, um, I can't remember the name of it right now. But it is all about how the government, how this, the elections are pretty much rigged. Mm -hmm. uh, and talking, oh. talking about things like gerrymandering and all the various ways, denying, trying to, deny, it's about the ways certain people uh, deny people the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't now, see that. Here's the best one. Down in Florida, mm -hmm. they said that ex-convicts could vote again, got the right to vote again, because up until recently they couldn't vote, all right, because they were convicted of a, uh, a felony. Uh, they've allowed anybody, they allowed anybody who wasn't committed of, uh, uh, convicted of a violent crime for being able to go back to vote, which would put about another, something like 17,000 people on the rolls or something like that. Well, it seems as though they passed another law in Florida. It said, well, if you owe fines and you haven't paid them, you can't get the right to vote back till you pay them. So guess what's happening? Michael Bloomberg is going down to Florida, and for everyone who's had their right to vote taken away from them because they didn't pay the fine or didn't pay restitution and certain things, he has a whole fund to fund 17,000 prisoners so they can get their vote back. <laughs> I'm guessing the like is let's, all, let's all hear it for Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. I'll give him credit. That's good. I'll, I'll give him that much credit. I mean, to even think of that was genius. And, it's in Florida, and too, that amount of people is the difference between the winner of the gubernatorial election in Florida yeah. And the loser. Okay. Oh. So 17,000 votes is significant, and he thinks he can even get more votes liberated. Yes, Brian Ludwig. I was going to say, I just love to see the camera. Aside from that remark I made about a swollen DeSantis, is, right, right, that's his name. DeSantis is swollen pecker and how he can't wait to fuck them up the ass. I'd love to see the uh, camera pan to his face as uh, if, uh, if, if Biden wins, if the opposition wins. And I love to see his facial expression of Florida does turn blue. Just, you know, the moment it does, the moment it's called, I'd love to see just his reaction. All the efforts he made have just gone to shit. And uh, he can go fuck himself with splintered into a two by four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep that up. I'm going to be demonetized tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My bottom is that's in a lot of Alex, That's what right Patreon's now. for. All the $15. What, that's what what's for? That's what Patreon is for. What is Patreon? Uh, it's uh, like uh, it, it's it's something you uh, can subscribe to 
And, you know, to make a long story short, people pay uh, a month, let's say like $5 a month, and the proceeds go to you or your organization, yeah. whatever you have for this. Yeah, like if you're offering something like a, like a, like lessons on YouTube or something. Yeah. Or, you know, you have like not, a merch, I, you can do not, merchandising too. I'm, like coffee I, mug or something. Yeah, like. and I'm, I'm going to be on, a, on a, a, a platform that nobody watches. But then why should you worry about monetization then if nobody's yeah. watching it? No, no, with? no. On uh, Patreon. Where's, where? No, no, no. You can, you can still do it on this. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 You just say, go to my Patreon page to pay me something. Yes. If you like. There's another one like Patreon. I think it's called BitChute or something. It's a competitor, but it's not as well known. And I may need, I may be messing up the name, but look that up as well. But, you know, as far as, you know using that as a vehicle for, you know, saying what you really want to say and not having to worry about getting your money. Well, you know, I will defend your right to say what you, I will defend the right to, to what you want to say. Uh, yeah. However, I don't think that the use of telling people about their appendages going up people's other orifices <laughs> is necessarily something that I feel I have to go out and defend. I've got better things to defend, <laughs> like your right to really... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Complain about wait this till, government, you know. I can't wait till you appeal this one, and the guy has to listen yeah. to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's what you do: tell him it's nonprofit that all proceeds go to Antifa. You know, you know what they do. <laughs> there you go. They constantly, almost every night, at least on the live version that goes up, they they say it can't be monetized. So then I have to appeal it, and almost every time, I win the appeal. They say, "Oh yes, congratulations," you know. And I'm thinking to myself. Why do you do this every night if you know that every night you're going to have to listen to the damn thing and you're going to come to a different decision than your little machine automatically made, you know? So. The ringing endorsement for the breaking up of big tech. How you doing, Tony? <laughs> Tony's been quiet tonight. i uh, like to hear what you're thinking about stuff. You know, I'm really excited for the debate. Yeah. Alex, I'm not going to say his name, but I kind of miss the other guy not calling and arguing with you anymore. <laughs> well, oh I God. don't. But I tell you, I think you're going to get your wish. I, I can't see Trump winning. I, I just can't see it. Neither can I. I, mean, uh, I, I if, it, if it happens, oh, man. I mean, if it wasn't for this pandemic, I would say, yeah, Trump's likely going to win. But because of the way he handled this COVID thing. I think it's going to it's going to be the uh, nail in his coffin. Yeah. I mean, can every poll be really wrong? I just find this hard to believe. Now. Well, the polls also this time are adjusting for the mistakes they made the last time, too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, two, two quick Robert. things. One, yeah. uh, Nate Silver has Biden's 77 percent chance of winning to Trump's 23. Wow. And, and Nate Silver is almost always right. Oh, yeah. And Tonight, uh, MSNBC is reporting that they have evidence that the CDC was told to downplay the severity of the COVID crisis in the meat plants back in March and April. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they were, Why did uh, they do that? They, they changed their recommendations. You know, they whitewashed them they, instead of being. Like, oh, just consider wearing masks or, you know, if yeah, somebody's yeah. sick, maybe they shouldn't show up at work if possible, you know, like that. Instead of saying, if somebody's sick, don't let them come to work, you know, right. make sure all the employees wear masks. They were trying Listen, to make downplay no, it. Make no yeah. mistake about it to people listening to me right now. Uh, I hate wearing a mask. OK, I'm yeah. trying to walk. Uh, it's hard to harder to breathe. Uh, I get lightheaded from wearing the mask. Uh, you know, I don't like wearing the mask, but I do. Okay. Number yeah. one, not for me, for you. And you should be wearing it for me. When you're not wearing a mask, you're insulting me. Mm -hmm. You know, how dare you? You know, and um, I saw somebody walk by an old lady, really old lady. I mean, if she gets COVID, she's gone. She's All right. Mom, yeah. you, you know. I mean, me might be, you know, but she was old and, and, and guy walks by her, you know, no mask. And I'm thinking, does he even think to himself, I could kill that woman? That bothers me to no end. You know, it, this isn't some, this is a matter. This is something we've, you've, we've got to learn. We are a community and we got to watch out for each other. 
And these people That's anti-American don't... anti-American rhetoric there, though. Huh? That's anti-American rhetoric, though, there, Alex. Well, you know... <laughs> it's definitely still in selfishness. If we've lost that ability, we've lost everything. We've lost America. Um, you know, uh, who was it? The, the guy who just wrote the book about about uh, Trump, who were... Oh, got, Bob, you know, Woodward. Bob Woodward. <laughs> He Woodward. said tonight, he was quoted, I looked on... Um, he should have published uh, it like three months prior. But, you know, well, he you, you know, he, 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 he couldn't do that because, number one, he wasn't finished interviewing him. That's for starters. And secondly, he had to write the book and get all this stuff together in some kind of a, a real uh, important uh, way. And I think it was just as good if he did it now because it's closer to the election. If he had done it earlier, we would. some people would have forgotten it by now, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, uh, you know, he said, very simply, he said, in the future, they're going to look back at this time and say, what the fuck happened to America? I yeah. hope. Or what? we could be prepping ourselves for a worse version of Trump in four or eight years from now. What? I said, or alternatively, uh, given the short attention spans that us Americans have collectively, uh, comparable to that of fruit flies, um, we could be looking at a worse version of Trump four or eight years down the road. Well, that's always possible because Trump saw how you can rally a certain amount of people to your side. But remember always, remember always that he did not win the election in population numbers. He only got it by by playing the ground game of the Electoral College. Aside from a handful of states changing that rule, a high side from a handful of inconsequential states changing that rule of popular vote versus electoral vote, it, the game can pretty much still be Well, a lot of same. states have a new rule, and that rule is our electors will go to Washington and vote for whoever got the popular vote in the country. And they're about, I don't think how many have done this. No, how many, no, a lot of states have done it. About, I think, 16 I states have done it, something like that. I think like it's that. like 15 have done it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, really? if more states would do that. Really? It, so so yeah. if, you're, if your state loses, but, but, but the popular vote, they would still go to. Uh, in other words, the a state guy? that, for instance, had this rule in place when Trump won in their state, they would still send the electors to Washington to vote for the person who won the popular vote. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. What states do that? About six, 15, yeah, 16. California is one of them. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 Didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. And, and it, it, I think it's it it uh, they have a name for it, uh, and I can't remember what the name is for it for that way of doing it. But that that's that makes a lot of sense. I I think so. You know, um, and that way we won't get we can get around the whole electoral college. I mean, we should just do away with it. You know, the electoral the electoral college is so antiquated. It would it worked in like. You know, 1790, but, you know, no, it, wor it, it worked though. when you didn't have the communication in place that you could get these yeah. these uh, um, results. Yeah. So yeah. what you got is you put a guy on a horse or a train and you send him from wherever out in the middle of nowhere to Washington, D.C., where he got together with a bunch of other people and he really brought the votes from his state. And that's how the Electoral College existed. It, it, yeah. It's yeah, not originally appointed. They weren't voted in by the people. They were appointed. They were appointed, yeah. yeah. And by the way, you know, an elector does not have to go to Washington, D.C. on the day when the electors meet, when the electoral college get meets. They do not necessarily have to vote for the person they're pledged to vote for. Right. You know, there's nothing... They could go to... He could go because he's Trump won in his state, and he's supposed to say Trump, and he goes, Biden. You know, and there's nothing they can do about it. Yes, the Robert. Electoral College was established because the smaller states in the original United States were afraid that Massachusetts and Virginia would, because of their gross population compared to other states, dominate each and every election. So there was at least there was at least some thinking behind the idea of the electoral But the question power. is, how do we come up with the number of electors in a state? Well, they came up with it based on the number of senators and representatives. And, exactly. And, and the, 
the southern states got three fifths per a, a person for all the uh, slaves right. that they owned. Right. But the slaves never got the fucking vote. <laughs> right. Yeah, but He's here's cool. the thing. Here's the thing, that because of that, you can have a state that has a small population that proportionately to a state with a large population like New York still has more clout yes. than it should have yes. because yeah. it's guaranteed at least two electoral right. votes, no matter I've, what it, its population is. I've said it here before, 18% of the population controls 52% of the Senate. Just stop and roll that around for a minute. Eighteen percent of the population <laughs> controls fifty-two percent of the Senate. Wow. wow! You can't spell control without, or you can't say control without you saying the word troll. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say without saying the word. Well, anyway, <laughs> well, that, yeah. uh, <laughs> I was going there too. Yeah. You, 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 you're getting soft, Brian. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Your mind's dirtier than mine is now. Dirty old man. <laughs> uh, I just to, to change the subject for a second, because, you know. Uh, right. <laughs> how's your mother doing, Tony? Yes. She's driving me crazy <laughs> tonight. She's you. driving me crazy. Every time I talk to you, you say she's so driving me good. crazy. She, you know what she's doing now? She get, She's getting a little, at night she gets a little cranky. So you know what? She, I was, I was on the computer trying to write some stuff yeah. for my hobby group, and she's sitting on the couch, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, "Why don't you go to bed, Alex? It's nine thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so she sits there, and then she doesn't even want to watch TV. She, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. So she, says, she wants to sleep on the couch. The couch doesn't even pull out. Oh no, no I hear. Her. I gave her two time OPMs. They still did knock her out. <laughs> Just get Morphine. I'm telling you, because at night she gets. I even took her Here, let me let me let me just give you a hint. Let, so she doesn't let hear me, me give you a hint, Tony. How yeah. old is she now? She just turned eighty. <laughs> she just turned yeah. eighty. She's my age. Yeah, yeah but I would, she, would I find her hot? Would I find her hot? No, <laughs> she's a small woman. Baby. I want to pimp her off to an old guy. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> you know what it is? You're she's okay. stuck in her way. She still she does it like it's nineteen sixty. She doesn't care about what's going on. She's still like, oh, I like know, I know this is a wrong, thing, day, wrong right? thing to say, Tony. Wrong thing to say. Is she tight? <laughs> oh, she does. With money, yeah. With money. The other day, we're in the supermarket. So I said, Mom, well, she wants chicken calls. All right, we'll buy chicken calls, right? I think they were like five ninety nine a pound. Put them back. No, I'm not going all the way to put them back for five ninety nine a pound. Get the breast. Don't worry about it. We can put them in the oven the same way. So I bought both of them. Oh, why'd you buy both of them? Because then when I go home, you're going to be asking for the chicken collars. <laughs> oh, she's got to pee now. Now I got to get up again. I got to help her. I have a move. question, though, for Tony. I don't know how she doesn't sleep at 2 p.m. an hour ago. You know, I'm I telling you, question. at her age, she won't know the difference. Give her heroin. Morphine. <laughs> I may take it too. Morphine, you know. Oh, that too. Okay. She's wearing I was. At night, I only I stay up all night, and she walks by the room. We do I this, by the way, during a yeah. political discussion for comedy relief. You know, it's right. just a light moment <laughs> when we can ask Tony, "How's your mom?" Good. You know, and then yeah. he then he has to leave because she has to go pee. Yeah, because I got to maneuver her into the bathroom, but she can do it. But she likes when I'm there watching her go in. Look, you know I something? I know I you know something? I, I I think that you're doing you're being too nice to her. I think if she has to be self-sufficient. That's what my sister said. And if she can't get to the bathroom fast enough on her own, let her pee all over herself. No, okay. There we go. I, I, I hereby <laughs> make a motion. Don't that forget Tony's the bucket. Mother, what? <laughs> I hereby make a motion that Tony's mother be um, nominated as the honorary vice president of Antifa. Okay. That's good. I was I thinking, favor, say I. That's good. That's yeah. good. I was thinking of a, a different solution for her sleeping issues, like something that wouldn't land you in jail. This is my question, Tony. Have you used the IV route? The, but instead of using heroin or some morphine or some shit, just uh, fill that shit up with NyQuil, you know? Uh, NyQuil. <laughs> inject it into yeah. her veins. Uh, no. Uh, it's, <laughs> sounds like something Trump would do, you know. Um, Anyway, and Alex, Alex, you could change you could change Gabnet also. 
Great, great Antifa broadcasting. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Undercover. Great Antifa broadcast. Very good. Yeah, right. Great, yeah. 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 I like it. Okay. Let's do it the April Fool's Day or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could tell people it was always that. <laughs> yeah. Undercover. In a way, it was. The secret code. You know, I, I have been um, uh, put in the middle of a whole conundrum with. Uh, uh, health insurance uh, mm. because of this whole thing with my union. Now, granted, I'm lucky because Marjorie's still working and her company will pay for it for the time being. But when they don't, I'll have to, well, for myself personally, have to shell out 450 a month for health insurance. You know, if I want to get most of the stuff I'm getting now. And I go, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know? I mean, that anybody, especially at my age, should have to put out that kind of money to make sure mm -hmm. I don't die. Would you, Jeff just gave me a nodded yes, right? Oh, yeah, I'm paying it, whatever it is. It's yeah, expensive. and it's, it's, it's expensive. And it's expensive, yeah. you know. Um, luckily, you know, but I don't want Marjorie to have to work forever just because we need the health insurance, you know. And I think about people in this country who are, who are, uh, hit with this conundrum. Now, you can get, by taking advantage plans, you can get almost, uh, you can get your insurance for almost nothing. But you have to pay a lot of co-pays and things like that. And by the time mm -hmm. you're through, you're going to wind up paying 400 bucks a month, <laughs> you know, anyway. So you got to take the other plan, in which there are no co-pays. Uh, but, I mean, it's just... I'm I'm thinking to myself, what kind of country do we live in? I mean, we're the only civilized country, only industrialized nation in the world that even has to ask this question. And any time you bring it up, like with Obamacare, which is a rather flimsy plan, okay, yes. but it was the best we could come up with and get passed, uh, that that we have this that kind of system. Uh, and we don't have a, a, any kind of a net for people. <laughs> and that it's, it's always, oh, we can't have, what do you want? You want socialized medicine in this country? Look at it in other countries. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, like, would you want to point to a country where it's terrible, where people are dying because their health system sucks? I'll tell you one where they die because their health system sucks. <laughs> yeah. Right exactly. here. I wasn't pointing at my penis. I, right here. You know. <laughs> I thought right somebody was going to get it up the ass again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Brian Ludwig, and then yeah. Jeff. After that, I was just going to say. Um, first of all, when speaking of this country in relation to or disrelation to uh, health care and other neoliberal and neo-fascist, uh, you know, aspects, I always make it a point to spell it without the O in country, and uh, secondly. A meme that's been making the rounds regarding health care and the ridiculousness of it and people like uh, Mitch McConnell, the turtle mm -hmm. boy, mm -hmm. the uh, meme reads, now, if I die as a result of this asshole taking away my uh, taking away my flimsy Obamacare, do me a favor and take my corpse, put it into a catapult and launch me into that motherfucker's office <laughs> and then do that with everybody else. Yeah. Light it on fire first, but yeah. launch me in there. I mean, it's just, it just, it just, I mean, I'm very lucky. I mean, I, I had this prostate cancer thing, which quite frankly is, is a, is a no brainer. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I, so far as I know, I'm not cured. I mean, nobody's cured, uh, until five years or something like that, but I got a PSA test and it was like a 0 0.02 when a four would have been fine, you know? So, I mean, obviously it worked. But it worked after I had to put out, uh, get billed about $110,000 for all the radiation and stuff. Uh, but I was very lucky. I had a good health plan. I did have to do co-pays. I paid about $1,100 in co-pays this year. Okay. But nevertheless, I was very lucky. People out there aren't as lucky. I mean, what do you do if you can't pay that other 20%? that Medicare doesn't pay. Uh, yes, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, the solution is to go to another country. 
Because I right? was in Australia one time, mm -hmm. and I had to go and have my medications tested. You know, give take some blood, and no big deal, right? They said, no, just come into the hospital and they'll take care of you. Oh, okay. Yeah, in okay. other countries. How much will it cost? Nothing. Yeah. We well, don't charge anybody for Well, this. in England, if, you, if you're if you a foreigner and you get sick, it's not like they send you over to the foreigner's hospital where they have a cashier. Well, they send you to a normal hospital and say, okay, and then when you go, well, where do I pay? They go, no, you don't pay. We don't have a cashier here. We don't have a place where you check out and and show sure. them your credit card, you know, but we took care of you because you're a guest in our country. How good is that? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And, you know, if we had uh, somebody else here who was like a Trump, a trumpet, uh, they would probably be saying, Oh yeah, but you know, they, it's inferior medical care. Yeah. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. One of the best hospitals in the world is the Pasteur Institute in France. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, hospitals here have to worry about every penny that they charge, and you know, they, 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 and you've got insurance companies. I mean, the insurance companies. What is the problem? There was a time when they weren't allowed to be profit making. And you know nobody even. Uh, so you have uh, you have hospital insurance? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I have it at work. They gave it to me. Today they don't give it to you at work. It's available to you if you want to pay. I I think I was paying three hundred dollars a month for it, at uh, at Sirius XM. Uh, but in the old days, I mean, it was cheap as hell because they didn't have to make a profit. They weren't sitting there on their haunches, uh, like vultures. Uh, waiting for people to get sick so they could make a buck. And every year the prices on insurance goes up. There's nobody there controlling it. It's It's got to stop. I mean, it's it's just horrible. And it, it, it is indicative of what we are as a people. We just don't care about each other. Getting back to what Brian said earlier, you know. Well, I certainly put a damper on the proceedings, didn't I? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, so when we get back to this whole thing with, with the, you know, the Supreme Court justice and so on, what's coming up is the Obamacare, question of Obamacare, uh, which has been struck down any number of times, I mean, even once by John Roberts, uh, that it's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with Obamacare, with the Affordable Care Act. And, and with you having to have some kind of insurance. But, damn it, um, uh, you know, it's, it may go down to defeat because of the way he's packed the court. And that's why we care about this appointment, because this decision, the arguments are going to happen in the beginning of, I think, uh, is it uh, October or November that they're going right. to... Huh? I think it's right after the election. Right yeah. after the election, they're going to go to the yeah. Supreme Court and argue this. Yeah. And you're going to have a court there that even the if he gets defeated, is not going to vote in our favor. Yeah. Yes, Robert. Which brings me to my favorite answer to Trumpites lately. When they start talking about Trump uh, promising a vaccine in October, mm -hmm. my oh. answer is, hey, October's next week. Go get online. And wait, you know, get get there now and wait. Well, and let me know how you make out. If you want yet another argument about about Trump, um, uh, he's going to give us a, 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 a vaccine in October. He hasn't even given us a plan to replace Obamacare for how long? How many years has he been saying next week? I'm going to come out with a plan that's so much better than Obamacare. You won't believe it. Has he, have we yet to yeah. even see an inkling of that plan? No. Bullshitter. He's a horrible bullshitter. Uh, what I can't believe is all his supporters. What? Why? Why can't they see that? It's so obvious. He's just a fucking horrible car salesman. They won't change their mind over anything. <clears throat> I can blinds their judgment. What, what were you going to say, uh, Brian Neary? Oh, I just said uh, they Trumpers will not change their mind no matter what. Right. The, more yeah. bad things, stupid stuff every day he says, promises he breaks. There's no bottom. 
he's yeah. he's the he he is the uh, the candidate cult of stupid leader. people. What can I he's say? Cult leader, huh? It, he's the cult leader. He's like Jim cult Jones. Leader. Well, I mean, you know, the thing that's amazing to me is that any of these people who are really, let's say, I don't think they've got a full set of teeth among them. Although, who am I to <laughs> complain because I've got a hole back here, but which I'm getting filled in a week or so. It's going to cost me a fortune to have the implant put in. But, I mean, you know, I mean, they're, they're, it, basically he is the uh, he is the candidate and the preferen preferential candidate of morons. Yeah. Yes, uh, Brian. Yeah, I was just going to uh, minorly disagree with Mr. Frank Chu there and saying that at least that, his name Jim isn't Frank Jones. Chu; it's John Larkin. But he always you know. okay, John Larkin. At least Jim Jones had the decency to try to kill his uh, followers off. <laughs> at least he did that. That's this true. Only to do that. And yeah. kill himself with them. Yeah, I wish he would. God, for God, fuck it, I wish he would. I I have a Jim Jones experience. When when I was in high school, you, Alex, you remember Winterland? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go there? Concerts there? Uh, I never went to Winterland for concerts. However, I was there when the Ice Follies used to play there, and my oh, father okay, yeah. played <laughs> violin in the orchestra. <laughs> That's funny. But anyway. But, uh, yeah. Well, Jim Jones, they had the People's Temple Church was just on the other side of Gary there. Right. When I was a kid, I'd go see rock concerts there, and they would they, they would come over there passing out flyers, you know, <clears> for, <throat> uh, you know, to come over there and check him out. At the concerts, did they serve Kool-Aid? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never went to any of the churches though. But uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 w I wish I would have kept one of those flyers that they used to pass out. But there's so, so many, so many things hanging on this uh, Supreme Court appointment, and it looks like it's going to happen. You know, uh, yeah. I, unless there are some Republicans we don't know about who are going to say, no, you know, no. It's just amazing to me that they're so in lockstep that 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 McConnell can say, well, we're going to take a vote on it and whoever Trump wants is going to pass. And they don't even know who it's going to be. No, oh, but they say they got the votes. Uh, How about that? I'm nominating Adolf Hitler for the Supreme Court. Yeah. OK, don't we matter. vote. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't matter. I mean, it's like. I don't think there's even going to be a question of, uh, of, of I don't know if they're even going to listen to her. You know, I don't no. know if they're even going to have a hearing. Yeah. This they have is, to have a hearing? We have, have, had, have, a hearing. We have had our democracy ripped away from us, <clears throat> stolen from us <clears throat> by a, a, a bunch of, dare I say, fascists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? But and, payback well, the motherfucker. Happened on hmm? Four years ago. What? Payback's a motherfucker, though. Well, I hope, I hope, you see, what I want is a defeat that is so brutal that it is going to make Trump feel like crap. Yeah. So he will feel he has been totally defeated. Yeah. Uh, I don't want some kind of wishy-washy thing. I want something where he is just defeated so badly that because we know where his ego is and we know how his ego works and his ego will not take a terrible defeat. Okay. I want him to feel the sting of that for all that he's done to us in the last four years. Shame on him. He took a once great nation and turned it into a piece of crap. Yeah. You know? Shame on him. He is, yeah. It's horrible. And I wish, you know, I wish we had somebody here. And, and I want to say to people who are on the right or I might be for Trump, you're always welcome to call this program. And you're going to be treated decently because we treat everybody decently. We may disagree with you. We may even get in some fights with you. But we will let you say what you have to say and not be silenced in what you have to say. Um, provided, and this is the only provision, you treat all the rest of these people with the same respect. And that's the important factor in, in disagreeing. Uh, uh, but I would love to hear from some people who are on the other side because I don't want this to be like MSNBC where everybody mm -hmm. is ha just hammering home the same story over and over and over again. 
there are enough of us here that believe on the Biden side, like to hear a few people who are on the other side. Because mm -hmm. it, when we're sitting here making assumptions who you are, and we assume you're morons, okay, uh, uh, we don't want to assume that. We would I'd like a really intelligent uh, Trump person to call the program. I may be asking for too much, but... Is it, yeah, isn't that an oxymoron? I'm well, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Couldn't help. Uh, but, I, but, you know, I, I don't, tried to call somebody today yeah. to see if they, if they would be interested. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't get a hold of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I would just like to have... Some, you know, I just want to encourage people who are watching or listening and say, oh, those guys, they're so terrible. They're just Trump bashers. Blah, blah, blah. Call. Not now. We're almost over with. But plan on calling tomorrow night, for instance. You know, uh, call this show because uh, we we love to discuss these things. Mondays don't call because those that's just a nice bunch of people having a nice time. Okay, it's an entirely different animal, huh? What did you say? No, nothing, Bob? nothing. Nice people over well, there. Well, you're there. No, not always. No, not, not always. Yes, I love to call on Monday. Hmm. Am I allowed to call on Mondays? No. 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 <laughs> no. Uh, no. Nice people, Brian. We're not allowed. No, Brian. <laughs> Brian, because you, you know, you would be, it, it, it's a nice, it, am I right, Brian Neary? You know what I'm talking Marjorie, about? Marjorie's on, so we got to be nice. <laughs> Marjorie's on and Shecky calls, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a lighter kind of show. You know, hey, Bloom, Bloomberg, sixteen million dollars he raised for that for the Florida felons. The, the, it's, sixteen million dollars. Well, yeah. he should be able to pay all their fines and all the stuff they yeah. owe, so that they can get out and vote. Uh, I yeah, think that's I think that's brilliant of, of Bloomberg, just yep. brilliant of him. <laughs> um, It'd be nice to have that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. He's not going to spend it on campaign, so... Well, he, yeah, he, he has to be careful, though, because I don't think he can take it out of his own pocket. He can only give so much to a campaign. But, uh, but you know, if he creates a pack or something, I think he can throw all the money into yeah, that. He, yeah, he's not giving it to the campaign. He's spending it himself. So, yeah. you know, that's the, the law. Have that Supreme Court ruling said yeah. that you can spend all the money you want if you, you know... You just can't give it to the campaign. You can't give it to the campaign. Okay, so he's doing something right. He's going around yeah. getting people yeah, to getting people the yeah. right to vote. Sixteen million dollars would get him a long way, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the state should be happy. They will see all those fines paid. You know. That's so, they, so funny. That's so they so can't funny. argue against that. Well, that let me. Uh, tickets. Hmm? This meeting of Antifa is hereby adjourned. Yes, we call this the meeting great of Antifa. Antifa Broadcasting Network. Yeah, the Great Antifa <laughs> Broadcasting Network. Hey, Charlie. That's a shirt you need. Yeah, Charlie, thank you so much, Charlie. Appreciate it. And, of course, Jeff, always a pleasure. Robert, uh, love having you here. Brian, she's not there tonight, huh? She's sleep. Maybe. Oh. Yeah, so. uh, okay, <laughs> out like a light, huh? I hope so. Yeah. She's a ham. Uh, John Larkin, thank you for being here. Brian, always good to see you. And Tony, great to see you here, too. Uh, why don't the, all of you give a nice wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. There will be another citizen panel being assembled any moment now over at the intersection with Jack Bishop. Uh, and uh, tomorrow night, uh, after let's see, 8.30, there's a sports program on with the franchise MC. Then at 10.30, I'll be back here, you know, talking to you. And uh, I was serious about if you happen to be a right winger, we want to have you call the program. We don't want to just monopolize the political conversation, okay? So uh, please call tomorrow night, okay? In the meantime... As always, I'm see you tomorrow night, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And also, as always, be safe out there. Wear a mask, okay? For yourself and for your neighbor. Bye, everybody.